right, so now we talked about problem solving and now we're going to talk about what can we do with that problem solving. We should be able to make good decisions in life, right? Humans, I mean, we're, we're good at making decisions. We make decisions all day long. But actually, what happens when we make decisions? Well, a pretty eminent psychologist by the name of Dan Airely, he's an expert on decision making. And what I'm going to be talking about for the majority of this subsection actually comes from his TED Talk, which I highly recommend watching. But I'm going to summarize it a little bit more briefly here. Imagine you have three doors, door number one, door number two, and door number three. And behind one of these doors is a prize. Which door do you pick? Do you pick one, two, or three? Hmm. Do you have your door picked? Okay. Whichever door it was, I'm going to go up to a door you didn't pick and I'm going to open it. And I'm going to show you the prize wasn't behind that. So if you pick door number two, I just showed you there was no prize behind door number three. And now I give you the choice. Do you stay with door number two or do you switch to door number one? You now know there's no prize behind door number three and I'm giving you the option to stay with door number two or switch to door number one. What do you do? Neither one of these doors is a sure thing. It's not guaranteed you're going to get the prize, but which door is more likely to lead you to the prize? What do you think? Well, if you said that you're going to stick with door number two, unfortunately, that's incorrect. This is a fun mathematical and philosophical problem that we've dealt with for a long time, but we actually increase our chances of finding the prize if we switch. It's about from picking one third to picking one half. So it's a, it's a little bit different. But that being said, that's a pretty tricky problem. What about problems and decisions that should be more obvious? Well, even situations and problems that we think should be more obvious, we sometimes pick things that don't make any sense. In Dan Airely's talk, he has this one example of a surgeon who is reviewing a patient file. And in the patient's file, they are set to go for knee surgery. But right before they send them for knee surgery or hip surgery, they discover they haven't tried one medication. It's an over-the-counter uh, naproxen, let's say. And so the choice now that the surgeon has to make is send this patient for surgery or try and put them on a prescription or a regime of naproxen. What decision do you make? Well, thankfully, most doctors will say, let's not jump all the way to surgery. Surgery is high risk, it's complicated, it's expensive. Let's try the medication first. That's a good decision. But in the same study, they also gave doctors another scenario. You're reviewing the patient and the patient's on their way to surgery, but you realize in the patient's file, they actually haven't tried naproxen and they actually haven't tried another type of medication. And so now you have two possibilities two possibilities for medication that they haven't tried. Maybe, maybe it's an and maybe it's coding. So do you try knee surgery? Do you try medication one or do you try medication two? In this example, the majority of doctors said they would select surgery. Why would they select surgery? Surgery is a lot more onerous. What would happen there? Well, that's because now they have to make two decisions instead of one. The first decision is surgery or medication. And then they have to make a second decision, medication one or medication two. And two decisions is more cognitive load than just one decision. They just pick surgery, the decision's done. And so in a hypothetical vignette, they are more likely to pick surgery. This is the problem. This is the idea that cognitive load influences our decisions and we do not like making decisions. Here's another example. Let's assume that you can get an all expenses paid trip to Rome or an all expenses paid trip to Paris. Both are very interesting cities. And what we might find is that people, 50% of people might pick Rome, 50% of people might pick Paris. What happens if you toss in a third issue? Here's your, th here's your three options now. Rome, all expenses paid. Paris, all expenses paid. Or Paris, all expenses except coffee paid. Coffee's not included and you have to pay for coffee and it's a couple dollars a day. What are you going to pick? Well, in Airly's work, he actually found that by adding in Paris without coffee, all of a sudden, more than 50% of participants choose Paris. It drives people into liking Paris better. It's the idea that, oh, having Paris without coffee makes Paris, all expenses paid, seem so superior, it seems superior even to Rome. And you can do this the opposite way too. You could also ask Rome or Rome without coffee or Paris. And that's going to make Rome with coffee seem like a better option. 
Now it's not just about the number of choices, now we see the role of distractors. So distractors can also greatly influence us. This is the idea that we throw in a choice that no one would pick, like Paris without coffee, Rome without coffee, and we make it an option just to make people choose amongst different options. This is something you might have seen if you subscribe to a magazine or subscribe to a newspaper, or if you're making different purchases and the merchant who's selling you these is trying to suggest a bundle for you. And when they're trying to suggest bundles or they're trying to suggest other options, be aware that there might be some distractors that are just there to make you want to spend more. Let's say you wanted to subscribe to a newspaper, New York Times, Washington Post, Toronto Star. And so there's an option for a year long paper subscription for $65. You can get an electronic subscription for $95 or you can get both for 75. Do you see the one that's likely a distractor here? it's likely the electronic subscription alone for $95. Why would you pay that when you can bundle both for $75? They're actually gonna make more money off that, it costs them less for this, and they're actually getting you to pay more. Without the electronic subscription, they're just selling the paper one, it would be hard to say, pay $10 more and you get it in two versions, but that 95 is a distractor that's going to increase the amount of money people spend. Still not convinced? Here is another example from Airely's work. Now these are my images, I'm not replicating his images, but in Airely's work he took computer made images of people's faces, they're completely imaginary people, and he called one of them Tom and he called the other one Jerry. So for example here let's call our blonde Tom and our brunette Jerry. And in his example he asked people, you know, who would you be more likely to go on a date with? Tom or Jerry. And because he was using computer generated faces, he was able to test it until Tom and Jerry were distinct looking, but were considered to be equally attractive. And 50% of people would pick Tom and 50% of people would pick Jerry. You may say that's not the case with my faces. I'm okay with that. So if Tom and Jerry were hypothetically considered to be equally as attractive, the next step in his work was to present an ugly Tom to the mix. So now you have three choices, Tom, ugly Tom, or Jerry, who would you like to go on a date with? What he finds is that previously, although 50% of people pick Jerry and 50% pick Tom, by adding an ugly Tom, it changes people's decisions. Now, way more people want Tom than want Jerry. Of course, nobody wants ugly Tom, but lots more people like attractive Tom. Same thing works if we add in an ugly Jerry. This is the idea that having two similar options, but one is clearly the inferior option, really makes the superior and similar option much more alluring. You might have found this when you've been taking multiple choice tests and there's four options, but two of them are similar. That may have tricked you into thinking that one of those two options had to be the correct option. And if you ruled that one is less correct, you automatically went to the other one. That's a common test taking mistake. And so this is because of this fallibility in our decision making. 